today. The uh, CBA, the NFLPA, was supposed to be voted on today, but the executive committee recommended to decline the proposal on the new CBA to the 32-man NFLPA Board of Repre- uh, Representatives. Now, there was a lot about this this morning because J.J. Watt came out and basically said hard pass, and there were some other prominent players who were basically like, no, Richard Sherman retweeted a tweet from Darren Ravel, who was on our show at the All-Star, uh, at the uh, Super Bowl, who yep. basically said, I haven't seen one this bad since the NHL proposal back at their lockout. So there was a lot of social media storm on this. So it doesn't look like that proposal is going to go through, John McMullen at JF McMullen joins us for football at four. Uh, so that's kind of where that stands. They, they were going to vote on it today. I guess they decided not to. And uh, maybe this seemed like something that was going to be, okay, it's going to get done. And now maybe not as smooth as we thought. Well, not as smooth as we thought, because we thought it was going to be approved today, uh, and they're going to push back the vote. I still think ultimately it'll be approved. We'll see. I, I think you nailed the you nailed it on the head when you said social media. This is about uh, you know. I, it's amusing to me that the executive committee, which essentially approved the deal. That's why it went to the owners for them to approve, and then you kick it back, and you have to have the votes. And they voted it down six to five. Well, why'd you agree to the deal to begin with and send it to the owners? That was the time to negotiate. So the answer to that question is because they want to be popular on social media. Social media is the ruination of society. I firmly (laughs) believe that. Because people do things, say things behind the scenes, and then they get on social media and they want likes and they want their friends to be happy. And they say something completely different. It is astonishing. So I think they're trying to stay, take a step back, and D. Smith is going to say, well, what, what the heck? Why are we send this to the owners? It was, it was okay one day, then it was not okay the next day. And then ultimately it comes down to the 1,900 or so players, and, and that's just a majority vote up or down. Um, there's too many, and I, I, I hesitate to use this term, but in the term of sports, There's too many middle-class players that aren't going to walk away from great livings uh, to strike. So ultimately, I think it gets passed. Uh, Some of the things that stand out, of course, today, there's some other, you know, new reports out there. The proposal in the collective bargaining agreement would increase the in-season roster size from 53 currently to 55. That's something that uh, gives, what, two more jobs uh, that, uh, you know, I guess the question would be like, okay, if you have 53 men, why do they need to have an um, an active list on game day? Why not just allow the 53 guys to play if you're paying all 53 guys? Well, in the past, it's always been a, a strategy standpoint and, and the fact that it was a big part of your strategy to a game. And that is going away slowly. Uh, they're going to have – there's also an extra – Sort of like the old third quarterback rule, they're going to have an extra offensive lineman rule that can dress uh, on game days. Um, And you mentioned, and also the practice squads are going to expand, first to 12 and then to 14. So that's more jobs. And then there's going to be an ability to move a certain number of practice squad guys to the active roster and back without exposing them to waivers. That's something new. Uh, and there's also going to be a, a third IR designated to return, uh, ultimately, if this gets passed. So, yeah, um, there's going to be a lot of changes from a roster standpoint. Yeah, there. Uh, it would also increase the size of practice squads by adding two spots for unlimited accrued seasons, meaning that any player um, – other changes would include curbing the commissioner's power in disciplinary cases and softening the marijuana punishments. Uh, that's uh, Washington Post Mark Maskey reports that the league is expected to expand the 2020 postseason to 14 games, something that we've uh, talked about before. Also, the owners, in their view, don't need the players to approve that because that is something that they can just do on their own is with the, the postseason expansion. So that's out there to which – 
Uh, there was a tweet from Darren Ravel earlier today saying, hearing the NFL players are being told that there's not much negotiation here, that this is the deal the owners are pretending that they don't take it, it's a strike or lockout next year. Yeah, I mean, I've heard from the other side, they're not going to lock the players out, so they're going to force them to strike. That's what I'm hearing, if that's the, the road they want to go down. And I just don't think that's going to happen. I, I mean, uh, a, a lot of people talk about the strength of various unions, and everybody points to baseball as having the strong, strongest union. It's a little bit easier in that sport because – there isn't such a high injury rate. And you look at the average length of career for a player in the NFL, when it's just over three, between three and four years. Uh, a lot of that has to do with um, injuries, but a lot of that has to do with just the violence of the game, uh, the effect it has on your body as a whole. And do you want to give up a year if you're going to make – Say you're going to make the minimum, Mike, which, again, compared to regular people, that's a heck of a lot of money. But you got a really short window if you're a back-end roster player to make a, a significant amount of money that you're going to have to rely on for a very long time. And you're going to be willing to give up a year of that? Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's going to happen. Right. And as you have mentioned, if the players are to accomplish this, you said yesterday that they should not commit to a 10-year deal with no opt-outs because how differently the NFL will look in a few years. So I'm sure a lot of that has to be going back and forth as well when you're looking at just, all right, do I like this, this, and this? Yes, but do I like it for 10 years? Yeah, I think that 10 years is always too long, certainly from always from the player's standpoint. Certainly the owners want to lock them in for as long as possible. So – that is the one point where I would argue that's the hill I would die on, but that seems to be way down their list. Uh, they're worried about stuff that doesn't matter. Uh, and again, I think it, I think it has to do with social media. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think it has to do with being popular. I think it has to do with group think and going along with the crowd. I, I, I don't think there's enough critical thinking well, going on. Yeah. And I mean, that's like we were talking yesterday is, I don't think people care that they add more games and that they make more playoff teams, but no one was really clamoring or asking for it. It just seems that they're doing it just to do it. And then when you do it just to do it, the next move you make when people do start clamoring for you, then what do you do? Well, it, it, it you know, you're doing it just to do it from a standpoint of, of I, I guess, the fan base, and they don't care, but they'll like Week 17 – but the owners are doing it for a reason. That's to generate revenue. And, you know, 48 to 48.5% of that revenue is going to the players. So it's not like they're not going to be uh, compensated for those extra games versus both playoffs and regular season. So there is a thought process behind it. And uh, I also criticized, you know, when Adam Schefter put out that $5 billion of money tweet going and everybody aggregated it in 10 seconds. I said, eh, slow down. That's, that's best case scenario, 5 billion over 10 years. People thought that was 5 billion over one year shifting to the players. Uh, but $500 million over 32 teams, that's pretty significant. And that's, that's the difference. All right. Johnny Mack is with us. Of course, football at four here on the sports bash, 97, three ESPN. Uh, let's get into this Alshon Jeffrey stuff, which uh, got a little interesting today as uh, the Athletics reporting that Alshon Jeffrey, quote, would welcome the change of scenery uh, that would come with a potential trade. Now, there's some interesting things in this article, but that's not really all that newsworthy, is it? No, <laughs> it's been that's been known for a while, certainly more so from the Eagles standpoint. Um, they would certainly like to move on. Uh, we know that, and we've said that for weeks and weeks and weeks. But, yeah, I mean, Alshon's not happy as well. Uh, problem is $26 million of dead cap money. And if you don't have that post-June 1st designation, it's almost impossible to move them. Uh, potentially, if this new, new, new deal gets done, you can accelerate 16, uh, between 16 and 17 million will go on the first year and then, the extra 10 or so would go on the second year. So it's a little more 
palatable if they have to cut him. Trade, we've talked about a lot. He makes a lot of money. He's hurt. He's not very good any longer. <laughs> People <laughs> skip over that, which is pretty important. So if you want to move him, it's going to have to be an NBA like salary dump type of deal. Um, the the article is written by a Jets reporter, and it kind of talks about the Jets and Joe Douglas. I don't know what how what kind of depth you have on uh, the Jets' financial you know cap situation, but would the Jets be a team and Joe Douglas that could say, you know what, we can figure it out. We'll bring him in, and then we'll take uh, the ramifications that come with it. Well, I think Joe Douglas hurts more than helps because Joe knows what type of player he is and really understands and knows probably better than most that from a physical standpoint, guy just couldn't run uh, last year. So I, I think the fact that he's so in tune with all Sean as a player, I think that actually helps. Uh, from a standpoint uh, of the Jets and the, and the cap, um, could they invoke that kind of contract if you throw along a second or third round pick? Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think he would be interested in that. Uh, but you never know. Uh, I mean, if they say this is a complete rebuild, my estimation of the Jets situation is Adam Gase has got to win and win quickly or he's out. Mm -hmm. So the last thing he wants to advocate is a rebuild situation. Uh, there's a part of the article which is interesting. We were kind of trying to figure it out. Now, we did text uh, Jeff Mosher, texted the writer to try to clarify it, but even the clarification seemed to be a little weird. But So we'll ask you, John. It says, radio host Howard Eskin outed Jeffrey as the source, <laughs> while ESPN's Josina Anderson denied it was Jeffrey, comma, several other Eagles reporters confirmed it, comma, that, too. That is untrue. That is completely untrue. <laughs> right, and that's what we felt was Jeff said, I don't remember Eagles reporters confirming Eskin's report. It was an opinion. And it said league sources told The Athletic that Wentz and Jeffrey never saw eye-to-eye -eye and their relationship was testy. Uh, well, to the first part, no Eagles reporter, uh, to my knowledge, confirmed that. Um, in fact, we all made jokes of Howard's, as we often do. But uh, nonetheless, nobody nobody confirmed that it's all Sean. None of us know completely 100% that it's all Sean. Um, I've heard uh, rumors, like everyone's heard rumors, and that's where this is all come. This is all coming from. There's always uh, the connection. All Sean's had a, a, a long relationship with Josina Anderson, but so was Zach Brown. So I, I threw that out there, I remember, at the time. And he had just been released. Uh, so he had an ax to grind. So uh, to me, it certainly it seems like the Eagles think it's all Sean Jeffrey. Um, I, I pointed to an Eagles.com article that was on their website over the past week to two weeks probably about 10 days ago or so, uh, where they talked about team chemistry and intimating. And, and I mentioned on this show at that time, I mean, Eagles.com doesn't criticize anybody, anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, and John, so when that's, they do that, that's, that's a clear indication uh, somebody is not in good steed, so to speak. Well, that sets up this question that in the article from The Athletic, it says, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, the guarantees in Jeffrey's contract void if he enlists, if he refuses to report, engages in hazardous activities, blah, 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 blah. And the key one makes any public comment that criticizes the team, teammates, coaches, or ownership. Theoretically, the Eagles can allege Jeffrey did that with the ESPN report. It's not easy, though. Jeffrey's name wasn't tied to it, nor did he say it publicly, and any attempt to go that route would undeniably lead to a grievance. But the funny part is you just mentioned that the website went out of its way to kind of make a thing. So is that an angle that you could see being played? No, no. Um, it, for, for a couple reasons. One, they could never prove it, number one. 
Number two, the NFLPA would just fight that to the hilt. They would fight that all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, number two, and I mean the U.S. Supreme Court, that's how far they'll go. And third, I think if you go back to those comments, that's pretty standard. That comes from Jeff McLean's story who, saw, who, who has seen the actual contract, but that's fairly innocuous language to a typical NFL contract. So when you start talking about even if you can prove it was all shot, you go back to those comments, guys. He said – Quarterback needs to check it down. We're, we're too complicated. Is that that bad? <laughs> You're going to say that's that detrimental to the team? Right. That's the only uh, thing I mean, they can point to. Right? And, and by <laughs> the way, yeah, and by the way, it wasn't on the record. It wasn't, so it's not public. And there are guys in that locker room every week that say far more than that on the record. So, I mean, people are just – no offense, but they're nuts with this. Hmm. There is no way the Eagles are getting out of this contract. And they know it. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's not even in the equation, that clause in the contract. It's not relevant. Not relevant at all. All right. So uh, I guess that's the uh, the end of the uh, Alshon Jeffrey get get lost uh, conversation. Yeah, right? that's that. <laughs> well, no, they want him to get lost, but for different reasons. Yeah. They want him to get lost. All right. Here's a question for you then. Does Jeffrey want out enough that he'd be willing to say, I'll get out of the $26 million? No. <laughs> no. no. I didn't think out. so. I didn't I, think I, so. I think he was No. Nobody's giving up that kind of money. And nobody should be expected to give up that kind of money. Okay. And, uh, I, and that's what I said. From the Eagles' standpoint, <laughs> they want him out of the, the locker room because he's a pain in the you-know-what. And because he's he's not very good anymore. Seems like such he a quiet, quiet nice he, guy. Yeah, well, he is quiet. Um, <laughs> you know, he's very quiet. He's very soft spoken. But I mean, he's got a history of this kind of stuff. Except for when Josie Anderson. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just I I just tweeted this out. You know, back in 2017 when he signed, everybody forgets this because they have such short attention spans. But he signed a one year deal. Remember, he was a free agent. He was hoping to. To, to set the wide receiver market, become the highest paid receiver in football, but was coming off a PED suspension, uh, coming off some injuries. The market wasn't there. But he saw, he turned down a three-year deal with Minnesota with sig- significantly more money to come here for a one-year deal, one-year prove-it deal. And he cited on the record specifically because of Carson Wentz. And he thought he had a chance to become the player, but not the person quarterback. Well, yeah, that part. I mean, he could have grown to know him and and dislike him. Uh, But that's the reason he came here originally. Um, And obviously it's gone in a, in a, in a bad direction, but the Eagles want to move on more so because they don't think he can play anymore. Yeah. It's a bigger deal than, Oh, the quarterback needs to, do this or the quarterback needs to do that. Well, for what it's worth, agent uh, Alshon's agent says he loves Philly and playing for the Eagles following the report that he's open to a change of scenery. It's a lot of phone calls yeah. the agent has made today, it sounds like. <laughs> well, you, you, that's what I said. You got you to gotta say something on social media, and then you got to go off social media and, and act in the real world. All right, uh, a couple other NFL notes, unless there's something else on the Yalshan or the CBA front you would like to add, John? Uh, no, I think I, I, I think I was pretty <laughs> declared up on post. All right. Uh, here's interesting news, though. The Bears uh, moved some cap space around today. Uh, a couple starters in two positions the Eagles could be looking for. Cornerback Prince of Mukamara and wide receiver Taylor Gabriel. That, according to Adam Schefter, they're parting ways with both. Both were starters. Uh, Mukamara, pretty good last year. He was uh, ranked 43rd out of 143 uh, from Pro Football Focus as a cornerback. Taylor Gabriel, he's a speed kind of guy, kind of that shifty slot guy that this the Eagles kind of lack. Uh, any of those of interest? Yeah, I think they both are, uh, specifically uh, Mukamara, because I do think the Eagles – are going to try to fix the cornerback position in free agency. I think they're more likely uh, to to go the wide receiver route in the draft because the draft is so deep at wide receiver. Um, 
Daniel Jeremiah had his conference call today. He said he's got 27 receivers uh, ranked as potential at least one through third round, so at least having a third round grade. That's how many receivers there are in the draft. So ultimately, from a strategy standpoint, I think they're going to try to fix corner and free agency and try to fix receiver in the draft. So I think Amukamara would be uh, of more interest than Taylor Gabriel. But you're right, both fit what the Eagles need. Yeah. I mean, Taylor, the one thing he can do is run, um, and they need speed. We know that. I like Taylor. I like what he does. I like the role that he could have in an offense. Uh, last one yesterday, this came out, and we didn't get to it because of all the CBA stuff, but uh, defensive end Everson Griffin uh, will void the remainder of his contract. I know uh, you have good ties with the Vikings. Would he be a hot name on this year's free agent market now? Well, he would be. Still, he had a really good year, Pro Bowl year, played at a high level, but he's 32. So he certainly wouldn't be interested here. This is a team that wants to get younger. And ultimately, I think – uh, he's going to re-sign with Minnesota uh, at a lesson number. Uh, he stated in the past he wants to finish his career there. Uh, and ultimately, they have a good relationship. It's just it's the hard nature of the NFL. As you get older and, and those numbers get high, uh, they want to rework the deal. And uh, Vikings have the least amount of cap space in the NFL, so they need to make some tough decisions. Uh, and if he doesn't, want to work on a rework deal he's got to move on but certainly wouldn't be philadelphia he's just too old and they want to get younger all right football at four in the books for the friday edition and of course we'll do it again on monday more nfl we'll check in on that cba we're getting closer to the draft and nfl free agency less than a month away john mcmullen all the way with us at jf mcmullen and check him out on 97.3 espn.com enjoy the xfl this weekend Ah, you too, man. Go Vikings. Week three. Yeah. Get excited. Yeah, Tampa Bay's got to get that first win. Go, get go, uh, sure. Colin Thompson. All right, pal. Uh, Johnny Mack, like all guests, if you're to be the boardwalk Honda hotline.